Hello dear students, once again I welcome you all and today my topic consists of sea waves and its erosional landforms. So we all are abide by the fact that the earth's surface or the earth's crust are divided into two parts. What are they? They are the continental part and the other one is the water bodies. So the water bodies consist of about 71% of the earth's crust whereas the continental bodies consist about 29% of the earth's crust. And we all have been learning that the landforms or the continental landforms are always changing. It is evolving and changing. It is dynamic in nature. It is created, it is destructed and it is recreated with the help of several mechanisms or processes and there are several agents that are engaged in such mechanisms and processes. So as such, the water bodies or the sea also have such kind of landforms which forms along the sea coast and which is also very dynamic in nature, which is also created, which is also destructed and which is recreated at all. So before we come into the sea waves, I would like to introduce the word waves here. So as you could see here, waves literally means the energy which is created with the help of any sort of disturbance. And that energy passes through an object which is captured and recorded as waves. For example, seismic waves. So when the earthquake occurs, what happens? There is the creation of energy. And that energy is captured and hence recorded and is regarded as the seismic waves. The other examples are sea waves, light waves, radioactive waves, etc. Now coming to the sea waves, sea waves can be defined as the disturbance on the surface of water caused by the rhythmic movement of water particles due to the action of wind. So what happens is that the water is in constant motion and when wind struck or when wind hits the water bodies, the moving water particles, what happens? There is the creation of circular pattern or a whirl which is regarded as the sea waves. So in a nutshell, I can define the sea waves as moving energy pattern. Moving, that means the sea water are, are always moving, it is in a constant motion as well as the wind is always blowing, it is also in a constant motion. When two comes in contact with each other, what happens? There is the creation of energy which is regarded or which are being produced as a pattern which is circular in nature and hence it is regarded as the sea waves. And there are several determinants of sea waves or the velocity of sea waves. One is the wind direction and another one is wind duration, the other one is fetch. Fetch means the area covered by the wind and the other one is state of sea surface. Now to talk about the parts of sea waves, there are several parts namely crest, trough, height and wavelength. As you could see in this diagram, there is the wave along the sea surface and the high point which you could see here is regarded as the crest and the low point or the concave part are regarded as the trough and about the sea wave height what is regarded the height from crest from the high point of the crest and to the low point of the trough is regarded as the height whereas wavelength refers to the distance that is horizontal distance from crest to crest and from trough to trough. That means height is the vertical distance from the high point of the crest to low point of the trough and wavelength is the horizontal distance from crest to crest and from trough to trough. So as we all know that the sea waves hits the coast and when the sea waves hits the coast several types of sea waves are basically formed which are named as constructive sea waves 
and destructive C waves. So before we may move into the constructive and destructive C waves, let us consider about the swash and backwash. As you could see in the diagram, this is the water body and this is the coast and the waves are hitting the coast and the waves or the water particles are moving in circular direction. So when the waves uh, move from the sea towards the coast, consider the arrow out here, it is regarded as the swash and when the sea water retreats back from the coast towards the sea surface, it is regarded as the backwash. So please consider the arrow out here. The arrow which soars from sea to the coast is regarded as the swash and the arrow which points towards the sea from the coast is regarded as the backwash. And it is due to the swash and backwash, two types of sea waves are created, namely constructive sea waves and destructive sea waves. Now, in constructive sea waves, what happens is that the swash is more powerful, that is, the waves are moving in the clockwise direction, that is, from the sea towards the coast. So, when the sea waves moves towards the coast, what happens? It brings away the materials and deposited, deposits out here and thus the landforms are created and hence it is regarded as constructive sea waves. Now to describe destructive waves, what happens is that the backwash is more powerful. That means the sea waves are retreating in more powerful manner. So what happens when the sea waves retreats is that these materials which are deposited by the constructive sea waves or the swash are brought down back and are deposited or settled in the sea again and hence it is regarded as the destructive sea waves. The work of sea waves can be studied accordingly into erosion, transportation and deposition. Since my class consists of the sea waves and erosional landforms, I would like to focus upon the erosion processes or mechanisms and the erosional landforms. So to talk about the erosional process of sea waves, there are four major processes. Number one is hydraulic action, attrition, corrosion or abrasion and uh, solution or corrosion. So I will be dealing it one by one. The first up is hydraulic action. So in hydraulic action what happens is that there is the disintegration of rock particles. So how is the rock particles disintegrated? So what happens is that if, as you could see in the diagram there is 1 and 2. So you could see this is the sea water surface and this is the rock or the headland. So due to the weathering and constant hitting of the sea waves in the rocks what happens a small cracks or joints are formed in the softer materials or the softer part what and what happens is that when the waves hits the cracks what happens it tends to push or push the water particles in the cracks so when the water particles enters the cracks what happens the air gets compressed and when the waves retreats back what happens the air or the pressure is released and hence the volume of the cracks or the air particles is increased. So when the volume of the air particles or the rock or the blocks increases what happens there is the enlargement of the cracks and due to the repetition process what happens the cracks tends to get enlarged and the rock particles or the rock blocks disintegrates into several parts and hence it is regarded as the hydraulic action. Now next up is attrition as an erosional process. So what happens is that attrition also refers to the breaking down of the rock particles into smaller pieces. So as you could see here in a small diagram, suppose this is the sea water or the sea surface. And as you could see here, here are the large boulders or medium sized boulders. So when it comes in contact to each other, what happens? There is the creation of friction. 
So when there is the creation of friction, what happens? The rock tends to get smoother and the repetition process of the friction leads to the disintegration of these rock boulders into very minute particles and these minute particles are eroded away and deposited in the banks of the river or the beaches of the river as you could refer the sand. Sand is very uh, minute particle and it is slender in nature. So the sand or the minute particles are basically formed with the process of attrition. Now third erosional process is corrosion or abrasion. So the corrosion and abrasion are profoundly found in shallow water and what happens in this process is that you could see here in the small diagram suppose this is the flowing river and this is the river bank all right so the materials deposited over the river banks are washed away to the sea with the help of advancing sea waves and what happens is that the advancing sea waves are in greater force so due to which the materials deposited over the banks are brought down to the sea and the materials that are brought down to the sea are again comes in contact to each other and what happens there is the creation of friction and there is the breakdown of the materials into several pieces. The last erosional process is corrosion or solution. So the corrosion or solution are profoundly found in limestone topography or where the lime content is high. So in limestone topography what happens there is the presence of CaCO3 that is calcium carbonate and that calcium carbonate when mixes with the salt water or the salty water what happens there is the dissolution or formation of solution. And that solution tends to mix with the freshly deposited sediments or uh, rock particles or the materials and hence what happens it mixes down. And when it mixes down there is the alteration in chemical properties and hence due to the corrosion or solution there is the chemical alteration of the materials that are present over the sea surface and the coastal area. Now due to several erosional mechanisms or processes which have learned several types of erosional landforms are formed by the sea waves. So first is sea cliff. So sea cliff are steep sided vertical wall which occurs during the high tide. As you could see here in the sequential diagram number 1, 2 and 3. So the first diagram explains the original position of rock beds and sea surface and the second one explains the occurrence of high tide and low tide. So when there is high tide and low tide what happens this part gets washed away and it washes away and are deposited somewhere here and the down part is regarded as the notch. That means the washed away part are regarded as the notch. And in number 3 you could see here is there is the occurrence of high tide and low tide and the upper part or the cover part are eroded away by the sea waves and hence a steep sided vertical cliff is formed which is regarded as the sea cliff. And this sort of landforms are profoundly found in the western ghats of India. And the other one is wave cut platform. So as there is this steep sided vertical sea cliff what happens the materials from this part are transported or weathered or eroded away and are deposited somewhere here or, the, or in the offshore. And this offshore or the deposition of materials forms a terrace or a platform like structure which is regarded as the wave cut platform. The third type of erosional landforms formed by, by sea waves are sea copes, headland and bays. So these sort of landforms are formed along the coastline which consist of differential rock types that is there is the bands of harder and softer rocks. Harder rocks like quartzite and softer rocks like limestone. So it is due to the 
variability in the rock types that is the softer and harder rocks what happens the erosion is is or erosion happens differentially and due to which there are several irregularities formed as you could see here in the diagram this part that is the part which comes towards the coast are regarded as the headland which are consisted of very hard rock and the cove are the rocks or the softer rocks which are eroded away or which are easily eroded away and the convex part is regarded as the cove whereas the concave part are regarded as the headland and about the base the cove which are larger in size which are surrounded in all the sides by harder rock are regarded as the base and sometimes the increase area of bay are also regarded as the sea beaches